We've got quarterback news, everybody. We do. We Carson do. Wentz. Big news. Carson Wentz headed to the Midwest to continue his career. Not with the Bears, though. He's heading to Indianapolis in a trade between the Eagles and the Colts. I'm Dan Weeder of the Chicago Tribune. That's Dion Miller from ABC7. This is uh, landmark news in an offseason that's going to be full of landmark quarterback news and a lot to unpack here with, with Carson Wentz heading to Indianapolis. The, the deal that the uh, Colts agreed to was sending a third round pick in this year's draft and a conditional second in next year's draft that could become a first rounder. So uh, a decent fee, but not an exorbitant fee. And Deanne, in my opinion, with, with the Bears, the Eagles, and the Colts all sort of involved in this trade discussion, this might be a win-win-win for all parties. Uh, a far cry from what it seemed like the Eagles were asking for him that already sounded outrageous, right? So, I mean, it, essentially, he's had one really good year. He's not had this consistency of being in the top 10 even. I mean, like one time he was number five quarterback in the league. And that was not last year, Dan. Like, that was right. a long time ago. So I feel like fair compensation for where they're at right now. Not surprised. I feel like this is a good spot for him to go to. Um, I I never liked the rumors about the Bears. Never liked it. And and I know that, I mean, I can admit that I texted you and was like, is this for real? Because it just, it, you knew the Bears were going to be involved somehow because they have such a grand, glorious need and glaring yeah. error at this position um so you knew their name was going to come up in the conversation i feel like if it had been the bears getting carson Wentz, just based on what we've seen it would have been an exorbitant amount of things they would have had to give up and that's i just feel like i almost feel like the bears are being played the fool uh, you know what i mean like and and i'm so glad they didn't go through with that and that isn't how it ended up because i feel like that would have maybe set them back even more at the position yeah, well, I had a league source earlier this week tell me that there was a very uh, fun and sort of fascinating test of discipline happening this week in three front offices in Philadelphia, where Howie Roseman is trying to scare up the price tag on, on what the bidding war could become for Carson Wentz in Indianapolis, where Chris Ballard wants Carson Wentz, obviously, to be his starting quarterback, but was certain not to be sort of falling for any head fakes or pump fakes or, or, or asking prices that weren't actually legitimate. And Ryan Pace, who obviously is in the market for a quarterback. And I can tell you that the Bears were interested and intrigued with the potential of Carson Wentz reviving his career in Chicago, but they were never in all-in mode, right? And they were yeah, going to make yeah. sure that if, if they were going to be uh, pulling the trigger on a deal like this, that it was going to be at an asking price that made sense for them. Uh, and so there was there was discipline there for Ryan and understanding that, that, look, there are going to be other options at the quarterback position, that there are other needs on the roster that need to be addressed, and you don't want to necessarily overpay for a starting quarterback who, as you mentioned, best football is, is probably four years ago now, and whose worst football is just this last season. And so what you heard, Dion, from folks around the league is that anybody that was going to take on Carson Wentz had to understand that they had to look at themselves like an auto body shop and that yeah. this was a wrecked vehicle in need of repair. And so you have to ask yourself, how much am I willing to pay to take on a repair project. And then if you go through the repair project and realize that you can't fix what is broken on that vehicle, then where do you turn? And so uh, right now that's Indianapolis's tax and it's not the Bears. And so uh, they will turn the page and they'll go into plan B, C, D, E, F, G. I think we've talked about it before. That playbook has to go down to Z and beyond for them as they try to solve this 101 year riddle. And uh, we'll see where they turn next, but certainly uh, interesting that they were involved and, and probably uh, kudos to them for remaining disciplined and, and not getting out over their skis in a way that would hurt them for the long term. I was going to say, yes. I mean, we have to give them credit where it's due that they didn't just go all in and get crazy because I feel like that what this is that they they're more than a tune-up right like you give me that visual of a mechanic yeah. and all i see is like pace's legs under the hood like trying to figure <laughs> out like what he's gonna do because i feel like that's where they're at right now and and giving the keys to carson wentz i don't think would have been the right move for them long term i i mean i feel and and i also feel like we they already have a carson wentz ish light guy and nick Foles, so you don't need to you don't why would you why why would you do that i mean why and then the other thing is that Mid, don't Mitch and Carson have the same agent? So that was another reason why I can't, I couldn't grab that whole like Bears will give a ton if he's representing on the other side and knowing that that the Eagles would take less, I guess. You know what I mean? So, so it's a valid point, yeah, because Rep One uh, is the agency that oversees Carson Wentz. They are the agency that oversees Mitch Trubisky and anyone that's followed 
the Mitch Trubisky saga in Chicago over the last four years knows that that there wasn't necessarily uh, great feelings about the way that Matt Nagy and Matt Nagy's system took Mitch Trubisky to the next level. It didn't take Mitch Trubisky to the next right. level with one right. of the reasons the Bears are in this predicament. And so if you're Carson Wentz, if you're Carson Wentz's agency, you're saying, boy, do we really want to go to Chicago and try to have our resuscitation efforts be in an offense and a system under a coach that hasn't been able to get things unlocked offensively? So that, Dion, I, I think was a factor in this trade. I don't know how significant it got, but Carson Wentz, uh, while the Eagles are certainly in charge of the trade, Carson Wentz can make it very clear where he'd like to play and where yeah. he wouldn't like to play. And if you make it clear to folks that, hey, I don't really want to be in Chicago, it makes no sense for the Bears to pull the trigger on a deal like that. It makes no sense for Carson Wentz to, to wind up in a place where he doesn't want to be. That's just a lose-lose for everybody. And so now he goes to where he would like to be. Frank Reich, the head coach in Indianapolis, yeah. obviously was with Carson uh, during the Super Bowl year in 2017. Press Taylor was with Carson for a few years there in Philadelphia. He's now in Indianapolis. Mike Groh, who we know from Chicago, yeah. was with Carson in Indianapolis and now will be reunited with him in Indianapolis as well. And so there's familiarity there as well. Uh, John Filippo, part of that Eagle staff in 2017, you know, I, I know that uh, he believed back in the day that he did his best work with, with Carson in 2017 and elevated him to MVP levels. And so that was certainly probably part of the intrigue for the Bears and in, in, in at least exploring this and knowing they had someone in-house that could tell them what's Carson like at his best, what's he like yeah. at his worst. But there were concerns within that building about the play, particularly in 2020. And some of the things that have come out of Philly in the last year and a half or so about Carson's ability to, to sort of connect with and ignite an entire locker room, those are all things you have to have. You have to have those discussions. And, and if it doesn't seem to fit, then you have to say, okay, let's remain disciplined. Let's understand there are other quarterbacks out there. And we'll see where we can go from here. You mean he couldn't collaborate, Dan? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> he struggled with his collaboration. Um, no, I, I do feel like they they dodged not dodged a bullet. I don't want to say it that way, but I do feel like they they stayed a course that was wise for where they are at right now. But you said that, you know Pace is probably thinking there are other options out there. Are there? I mean, seeing that report by Field Yates on ESPN saying he thinks Sam Darnold will be their starting quarterback come week one what like I don't think that's a wise move so where does this that's what my my curiosity right now Dan is where does this leave the Bears what where what direction would you put on your GM hat and and tell us like what direction would you go in because I currently am kind of like they don't know what they're doing that's part of the problem and now here we sit here's how I feel about the next two months as it relates to what the Bears need to do at this position. I think this is very comparable and parallel to 2017, where Ryan took the multiple big swings at the position. He went out in free agency and he signed Mike Glennon and said, let's see if we can squeeze something out of Mike Glennon. Obviously they didn't. That was a, a colossal disaster and didn't work out. They also drafted Mitch Trubisky in the top five. And obviously that didn't work out after four years either. And so they're back in the situation, but I don't think there's any harm in going out this year. And look, people need to just set their expectations accordingly. Carson Wentz was never going to excite anyone. Sam Darnold's not going to excite anyone, but these are the types of, of retreads that you're going to take a flyer on. This is what happens, Dion, as we've talked about a hundred times, when you're stuck, when you're lost, when you're when you're on that eight and eight road, these are, are the predicaments you wind up in. But so, so they, my, my guess is that either via free agency or the trade or, or trade, they will wind up with a veteran who's a cast off from somewhere else. They're going to wind up with a cast off. And then you'd be wise to make sure that you draft a quarterback. If you can move yourself up the draft board accordingly and maneuver to a spot where you can find a guy that you really like and have that fallback plan. If, you know, if the scenario arises where, where the cast off guy you have, Turns out not to be the answer, which in Chicago is very often the case. I know. NFL mediocrity. It's a toss-up. Would you rather live in NFL mediocrity or a place that it never stops snowing? Like, if they bring <laughs> anybody in right now to even interview, I'd be like, no, that's a hard pass from me. <laughs> like, it's been between the weather and where this franchise is. Like, that, nothing about that is really appealing right now, Dan. I was sitting on my couch last night and watching ABC7, by the way, and I was told... Thank you that uh, this was 10 consecutive days of measurable snow at O'Hare, which I believe is a record in Chicago. And so I was out with the snowblower this morning. There's been many mornings, many nights that I've been out with the snowblower. It doesn't stop. I tweeted the other stop. day 
with a curse word. I don't normally tweet with curse words, but I tweeted the other day with a curse word saying that Mother Nation, Mother Nature had turned into 1988 Mike Tyson. And then it was bleeping impressive because every single day you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Every and you're just single beat day. Up. Beat up. It, it's true. Like my husband looks out the window, he's like, we just did this. Like we just did it all. We can't get our mail. Like what is happening? <laughs> the wall of snow on the side of the driveway, it, it's it's approaching the level of the lowered basketball rim right now. No, I mean, oh, we're getting up to the eight it. feet rim. We're getting close to the eight feet rim on that side of the driveway. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm about to okay, lose my so, so um, I think the Bears just made a wise move to just kind of hold back. Let's see <laughs> if we can get something to, some sunshine to bring in someone who this would appeal to. Um, I'm anxious to see what direction they go in though, Dan, because it is, it's, it's such a moment. I know we've talked about this before, but like with Mitch moving out and moving on. And so now moving away from him. So this is such a moment for this franchise to begin to get it right. I don't think they get it right right now. Like you said, it's going to be a cast off who's going to get behind center and and hopefully, I mean, the road to 8 and 8, here we go again, and then hopefully that will set them up for something a little bit better because I don't I I hear people say, "Oh, th this is a win now franchise." I, I don't know. I don't know if I feel that way. It's not an insert quarterback and machine go. They don't know what they're going to do with Allen Robinson, Dan. Like right. this is not a this is, they, they've got way too many question marks. Again, I see Ryan Pace under the hood with his little <laughs> legs going. Like, there's so much work to be done here. Uh, the, I'm too tired. The, the trap that fans need to avoid, the trap that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy need to avoid is believing that this is June 2019 and that this is an organization and a team as currently constructed that's ready to win the Super Bowl next year. This team is not winning next year's Super Bowl. I'll go on record right now. And maybe I, I, you know, I have to be careful what I what I will do if they if they do win the Super Bowl because that is trouble. Man, this is the, like the safest bet you've ever made. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I said when I, I told ESPN 1000 that I'd take my shirt off in the State Street Studio if the Bears traded for Khalil Mack. That backfired on me a few years ago. But <laughs> the Bears are not positioned to win next year's Super Bowl. They're not one piece away, and they have to be very aware of that as they go into this. Look, can you be a playoff team next year? Absolutely. You, you make the right moves and you, and you make very few mistakes in this next roster refurbishing cycle. You can be a playoff team again next year. But but the idea that they're suddenly going to be on a, a, a stage with the Lombardi Trophy, it's, it's far-fetched. They're not that close. And they have to be very realistic about that and make sure they keep their eye on the long-term future. Uh, one other topic on this note that I'd like to bring up is just let's be careful, folks in our audience, of understanding what credible news is and what speculative rumor is because as we've seen over the last few weeks they can sometimes blend together and the line can get yeah. really blurry on what's legitimate information and what's just something that's being thrown out there by people you've never heard of that never. claim to have information that that seems to be pretty high level information that you say how could a person that i've never heard of have that level i love information be careful of the information that's flowing around out there check it double check it triple check it and hopefully by May, we'll have a, an answer on who the quarterbacks are in the quarterback's Word, room for Matt Nagy. Uh, words of wisdom, man. Fast and wrong, still wrong. So just be patient. You don't have to, like, get on board with something just to be the first. Just be I, called it, I called it Baranon this morning on Twitter. So <laughs> be careful of Baranon. Misinformation spreading around too quickly. It can lead to dangerous oh This is true. <laughs> we'll see you soon.